In the second module, we're going to be talking about decentralized exchange, or DEX. And most of the discussion will be focused on the leading DEX, which uh, today is Uniswap. So what is Uniswap? We've actually been introduced to Uniswap in the previous course in terms of uh, DeFi uh, primitives. I gave you an example of a constant product uh, automated market maker. So, so Uniswap is basically the prime example of the automated market maker on the Ethereum uh, blockchain. So we will talk about uh, version two of Uniswap. Um, there is a version three that I will also talk about and the differences between version three and version two. But I think it's important to understand version two um, before actually uh, going to uh, version three. So again, uh, the example that I used in the previous course uh, used a constant product rule. So in the previous course, we had a situation where we had uh, 10 of one coin, uh, 10 ether, and 10 and, and 1,000 of another coin, let's say USDC. So the key was to multiply those two together, and we got 10,000. Okay, and that is something that will be fixed. So uh, the algorithm, so in this formula, the K is going to be fixed. Okay, and I showed you the examples of how um, this constant product uh, 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 automated market maker actually worked, and we've got plenty more examples uh, in this module. Okay, so again, the, uh, the product is denoted as K. It's the lingo in DeFi. This is called the invariant. So it remains uh, fixed. Okay, the AMM is risk neutral. And what I mean by that is that it is not aware or doesn't really care if you're buying or selling. This is completely different than traditional finance, where there would be a market maker, uh, and that would be a person, and they would definitely care uh, whether you're buying or selling, and there'd be different prices. Okay, so this is a very interesting idea, um, and it's a very simple idea, and, uh, and literally just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what can happen uh, in this space. Okay, so uh, because we've got this constant uh, product, K uh, equals X times Y, we also have the exchange rates that are, um, that are set as basically just the ratio of the X and the Y. So, so let's go through a number of examples, and, uh, and these are, are, are very simple examples just to give you the idea of what's happening. So, so let's think of uh, a Uniswap pool where we've got two stable coins, DAI and USDC. So as with any uh, Uniswap uh, pool, you put in the same value uh, in terms of the pair. So these are both linked to the US dollar. So uh, four die equals four USDC. So in this situation, uh, the invariant or the product of the supply of die and USDC is 16. Okay, and the exchange rate is just one to one. Okay, so uh, and the invariant, you can see uh, how that's uh, calculated. Okay, this is where we start. Now, this is an example of a pool of liquidity that is really sparse. So this is just for an example, we'd never have a pool with so few DAI and USDC. It doesn't make any sense, but for the illustration, let's actually go through and look at uh, the mechanics. So suppose that um, you wanted to sell four die uh, for USDC. OK, 
Okay, so that's, we're gonna use uh, this. So we've got somebody that wants to sell for die. Okay, so we're gonna use the automated market maker. So we're gonna deposit the for die to the contract. And it turns out that you can only withdraw two USDC. Okay, so, so again, look at the mechanism here. So an additional four die have gone into the contract, so we've got a total of eight. Okay, so we need to maintain the invariant. The invariant is 16. The only way to maintain the invariant is to have two USDC. So only two USDC are able to come out of the contract when you deposit the four a die. Okay, so uh, this is uh, essentially how this works in a very simple way. And you can see that that's a, a, a very a considerable decrease uh, in value. So, um, so notice that the effective exchange rate here uh, was two die for one USDC. So, so again, this is, uh, we sometimes call this slippage, but this is really the result of insufficient uh, liquidity in the pool. So this is an example of something that really doesn't work. The mechanics work, but uh, it doesn't make any sense that uh, it would take two die uh, to buy one USDC, certainly not on the open market. So now let's change the example a bit. So let's, let's add some additional uh, liquidity. And even this amount of liquidity is like too small, but I want you to see how it transforms the situation. So now, let's say we've got 100 DAI and 100 USDC. Okay, so the invariant now is much larger. Previously we had 16, now we've got 10,000. And let's do the same uh, transaction. Somebody wants to sell four die for USDC. So again, they deposit four die into the contract. And what they're able to pull out, according to the algorithm, is 3.85 USDC. And you can see the mechanics in the box below that if you look at the invariant, which is 10,000, we now have um, we now have 104 uh, die, and the only way that we can maintain the invariant is to have uh, 96.15 of the USDC. Okay, so so that's where the 3.85 actually comes from. So you can see that that's way different than the previous, that the slippage here is effectively uh, going from uh, four die to four USDC, the slippage goes from four to 3.85 USDC. So it's a smaller amount, but still it's large. And while I don't have the example here, uh, you can probably see where we're going here that if it was the case that instead of just 100 die and uh, like 100 USDC, that we had millions in this pool, the slippage is gonna be really, really small. So this is really important here that um, liquidity is crucial. So if there's deep liquidity, it's gonna minimize uh, the slippage. So the slippage is the, the amount that the exchange rate will actually um, be changed by the actual trade that you're executing. So it's important to have these for the success of a, um, a you know, decentralized exchange like Uniswap to have sufficient liquidity. So in the big picture here, Decentralized exchange is a competitor to the centralized exchanges like Coinbase and Binance and Kraken. So for the decentralized exchange 
to give the user a good experience. It's important to minimize that slippage, or uh, in, in other words, to, to maximize liquidity uh, in the pool. Okay, so uh, indeed, um, what Uniswap does is incentivizes uh, depositors to supply uh, the capital. So you provide uh, capital, you're incented, uh, there's lots of capital, there's minimum uh, slippage, and the DEX becomes much more competitive or, or even superior to the centralized uh, exchange. Now notice that the liquidity provider is adding to both sides of the market. So when you set this up, uh, you put an equal amount of liquidity uh, in, uh, at both sides. Um, so there's a number of different layers uh, in terms of the importance of liquidity. So, um, so, so basically when additional supply comes in, this will increase uh, the, uh, the liquidity and decrease the slippage. Um, so the higher the invariant is, then the lower the slippage. And you can see, you can indeed graph it out uh, to show uh, the amount of slippage as a function of the invariant. Okay, so the invariant, you can think of it differently, uh, is a direct measure of liquidity in this particular uh, protocol. So um, within Uniswap, there are some fees. So there's a 0.3% fee, and that fee is paid back into the pool. Okay, so, so again, this is a fee that uh, those that are providing the liquidity, providing the uh, supply, uh, they're going to earn the fees based upon their contribution to the liquidity uh, pool. And you can imagine what's happening here. There could be lots of trading on both sides, buying and selling. And the more activity, the more fees that are being generated, and the more uh, that goes to uh, the suppliers of the liquidity. So uh, ideally, if you're supplying liquidity, you would like to actually go to a pool that's got a lot of volume, a lot of turnover. Okay, so, so this mechanism is, um, is very similar in terms of what uh, Uniswap does uh, to the C token that we uh, discussed uh, with Compound. So you're providing liquidity and there needs to be uh, a share of, of the pool. And uh, instead of C, we've got um, Un Uniswap's own version of this. So think of a DAI Ethereum pool as having a, a, a uni token that is DAI slash Ethereum. Okay, so it's a little different, um, but the same basic idea in terms of the, uh, the uni uh, token.